What's up, squad? We inside. We code it after hours. Your number one shop for all your, I would say motorsports needs, but recently Dave said no to gas bikes. You know, just the street wooden ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we've if got, you got a two stroke. got exceptions to, to every rule, but yeah, no more, no more street ridden quads, dirt bikes, please. No more street no, quads, no more street dirt bikes. If you got your Kawasaki KX85 and you're riding off road, hitting jumps, feel free to bring it in here, but you street people, you guys, were, you guys are banned. You guys are banned from We Code It. What are we doing today, Dave? Uh, we're gonna rebuild some Fast Ace forks. Uh, you mean some, no. you mean some brandless? Some off-brand Some Some Chinese forks, forks that have no name that just happened to be leaking after uh, six months of use. We of tried to slow the, uh, the whole process here, but. Right, so the diaper's coming off. Yep. No more diapers. It doesn't look that bad though. Dave's gonna show us how to rebuild the forks. We're doing new seals, I'll grab those in a second. But there is one brand that everyone has been talking about when it mm. comes to front suspension and that is... EXT. The EXT shock. The new fork. shock that everyone's talking about. Oh, fork. Shock and fork. Yeah, uh, everyone's talking about these EXTs. Um, Electric Cycle Rider made a video on them. Uh, Saroncer's got a pair. And another creator we know is getting one. But those are shocks that are made for the Suron, which that's is right. kind of a new thing. Yeah, yeah, so it's not a mountain bike fork uh, that's just, you know, overpressurized, oversprung. Um, that, that fork is basically provides moto level dampening uh, same kind of dampening you would get on a KX, uh, or excuse me, the uh, 85SX forks and uh, without the weight. So it's a 10 pound fork um, and you're definitely going to see some videos coming up soon. Uh, the do's and don'ts and the reasons why. Um, maybe not the 85 front end is the best front end for riding just depending on what you do. So um, yeah, a lot of info on that in, a, in, a, in another video. But um, yeah, we can we can get those at emotorworks.com. And you can use loophole for a bit of a discount. That's right. That is correct. Okay. So yeah, there's lots of shock options out in the Suron world right now. Most of the time you see the Fox 40s, but even those are getting kind of played out. And uh, what's another good one? Olin's if you're super balling. Sure. But it seems like this new EXT shock is the fork. That's the one to get. Is the one to go with if you're looking for top of the line Suron suspension. But we went ahead and we ordered some new seals for these. Uh, no name, just stickerless, whatever shocks. Great, sh great fork probably. But somewhere along the line, uh, it started leaking on my wheel and my bus floor. So Dave's gonna and your front brake. And my front brake, which is now uh, mm -hmm. dialed in Magura. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're gonna see what's on the inside of a fork. And Dave's gonna make these squeaky clean. And Sounds he's like against back, shock though. socks. I asked, shock socks? I asked know, what's they... a shock sock, and you said you've been hanging out with Dallas stunt people for too long. <laughs> And it's they're they're okay as long as you maintain them. They are a maintenance item. So yeah. like if you get dirt packed in there, like if you just do the same thing you're doing and you don't maintenance it, it's just gonna get it gets packed inside of here and it's just gonna shove inside the fork tube. So so you but you're saying if I put shock socks on this, it would look ridiculous. I think so. But. It Those keeps, neoprene covers you're talking about, right? I don't care if they look goofy. I want a bulletproof fur on. Okay, all right. These are looking pretty shiny. I should have asked you to uh, give it a test ride before. Oh, because I have. I know what they feel like. And have you felt the weirdness? Does it feel weird in the front? Because honestly, it seems like it's performing fine. There's just crap everywhere. Now this side needs a diaper. That side at least doesn't have a brake on it or anything important. Yeah, nothing important. But yeah, these shocks, uh, they lasted me for a while. They were good. 
My stock uh, ones were three mega rides. Three mega rides at least. Did it? That's that's. that's all Wait, we got. no, not even. New York. No, Houston. Just, just Florida, New York. Nope, Houston. Houston. Houston no. That we had a normal bike. That's right. We had a stock. <laughs> I can't even believe the it. The baby looking, dragon. Looking back, I can't even believe I rode a stock Ron for so long. Oh man. No, shout out to stock stock gang because the stock Saron is actually pretty dope. Not as dope as a Ultra B though. Stock mm. Ultra B, man. That's a bike I would probably keep stock for at least three years. So what is this side? Is this the is this the rebound side? We're gonna find out. Um, I've rebuilt several dirt bike, sport bike forks. Um, I've done my DNM forks, but um, I've never rebuilt these. So I got YouTube certified before we uh, put her on the rack there. So. Oh, you did your you did your due diligence. You know, there was limited info to be honest, but. I do have every single fork seal driver tool that has ever been made. So with that and some fork oil, I think mm. I think we can get it done. Nice. This is gonna be the spring side, I believe. Aren't you supposed to not look down the barrel of a spoke or something like that? Oh, careful, dude. Wow, watch where you point that thing. Putting soft jaws on today. Okay, soft jaws into the vise. The softest of jaws. Taking the utmost precautions. And then hopefully I have a fork wrench tool for it. If not, we're prepared to do some redneck shit to get this loose. Oh, yeah. Looks like some redneck shit's gonna happen. Uh oh. Dave is prepping is, the redneck shit. This is a little bit Oh, that looks know. like some redneck I, shit. I don't know if we. Just in case. Just in case. Dude, this is how I could have straightened out my uh, peg bracket. Just clamp that onto I just the peg. Don't have, like, get a little leverage. I don't have a crescent that's like mid size. That's my problem. Okay, I found a new tool that I need to buy. That's that's fine. Mid sized crescent wrench. Are most forks maintenance from the top like this, or it's um, a, a toss up? Yes. The the first step in any fork rebuild I've ever done besides relief the pressure, if this is a pressurized fork, but it's not, there's mm -hmm. no Schrader valve on it. So um, yeah, you crack this loose and you can dump the oil out the top. So, so we'll forks. be uh, super careful on this. I would advise getting a proper fork wrench. Oh, and it's not tight, so you know, it's nothing too Forks crazy. usually have oil or air in them? Yes. Both. Yes, both. But this one has no pressure. No, it's just dampening. We're just taking all necessary precautions here. We code it. Well, I mean, you said you did graduate from YouTube University and yeah, in specializing in this exact fork. Yep, I'm a freshman. Okay. So. I can't believe there's any in there still. Oh, that's the least leaky one. This is the newest. This side wasn't leaking when we first arrived here yeah. on site. And then next, we usually take this off. So there's like a jam, there's a nut right here. It's got two flat sides. So I'll find the right size wrench for that. And I can take this top cap off. And then we can separate the inner and the outer chamber. And then we can powder coat it bronze chrome. That's right. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> be back in 10 minutes it'll be all done <laughs> oh do you see anything wrong so Good. far do you see anything weird or like no because it's leaking from down there but we got clean oil i mean it's it's dirty there's any excuse i can get to bring my big channel locks out you know Yeah, and all this stuff is really not super, super tight, so. So it's easy or that's not a good sign? No, it's just, this is all not 
this is all soft material so oh, i see you don't want to like over torque this or run this jam nut super crazy um looks like we've got this um basically what happens when you turn this adjuster it's going to run down and keep more tension on this dampening rod and that's what actually changes the valving or you know, I'm not a suspension expert. Go watch somebody else's video if you want a technical <laughs> No, no, watch breakdown. this. Watch this we're video. Just, we're just... They're already this far into it. <laughs> Don't. Don't go to another video. We're just getting warmed up here. Okay, okay. now you pull out the, all the this. Dampening rod. Okay. Uh, fork skewer. That's right. And so now we're going to take the dust seal out. And that's what I ordered? These are dust seals? Uh, hopefully you got... A dust seal and an oil seal. Maybe we should have looked at them. Yeah, we should check the bag before I just started ripping your forks apart. Yeah. No, we like to. We like to dive in head first. That's right. Okay, so we're taking a retaining clip out. This is basically what holds the forks from coming apart. Ooh. Oh, she's a tight girl. Okay, so now we can just yank them apart. And. Ooh! We got, got a scorer. We got a little scoring. Oh, that's like right my there. stock ones, but worse. Mm -hmm. And is that from me just not cleaning out the crud uh, that gets up this in there? Is, this is. You can tell in the orientation of the fork that this is like from front and rear. Like, so just from deflection. Uh huh. Um, and that just has to do with the tolerances. I, I would assume between this and the fork bushing that it rides on inside of here. So, um, yeah, not a huge deal. I mean, that's way up in the in the stroke of things. Yeah. Um, so I don't expect it to be. But my stock forks, that was way down, and oh, they yeah, were just was, not moving. It was totally. All the coating was worn off, pretty much. So this is. It's not new fork time. No, not today. Okay, and so we have inside of here, there's an oil seal. That's actually what keeps all the oil inside of this chamber. And so if your forks are leaking, this is the seal that um, is causing that to happen. And usually it's just because of excess dirt getting packed in um, from suspension cycles and riding in, in dirty environments. So, um, so basically, I just need to clean my forks more often after these um, off-road yeah. trips I do. Yeah. If you want to ride. Because no, G-Bear literally has these same forks and he has had them longer than me and his are perfect. Right. Okay, so that's your seal. And then also in here, there's always gonna be a washer. And then pressed in is uh, an inner bushing right here. So I'll run this through a parts cleaner, clean the lower leg, uh, get it, it's really important to get everything cleaned up before we do the reassembly. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we can put everything back together. So this is what we're replacing? Yeah, that's the main, the main issue right there. And then, but is it leaking because of this scoring? No. It's no. leaking because these are just getting old and moving around too much. And, and the dirt contamination. Oh, for okay. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this looks like something that you would cook hot dogs in. Is that no. is that a double purpose thing? It's a it's a single burner, so. Oh, so like v Vienna sausages. Yeah, maybe. Pretty cool. Hmm. All right, so we're gonna. Take a, a little grease, because that never hurts. Not too much, though. Just a little bit. And so that's the first thing that gets put on. The dust wiper? The dust wiper. Not and to be confused with the oil diaper, which was... Fork um, diaper. Fork yeah, diaper, right. yes. Fork oil diaper. That All was right. a makeshift modification. And you want to make sure you put it on the right way. And so then we can join these back together. 
And so <clears throat> the next thing we have to do is drive the seal in. So that's what these little guys are for. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of like to grab it like this. And the ones from Motion Pro, the metal ones are a little easier, but yeah, see that's already pressed in. And so basically what we're, what we're looking for is uh, we need to make sure that the snap ring is going to seat all the way down fully. You heard it snap right there. Yeah. Uh, I can go around with a pick and just double check, make sure it's... Yeah, it's fully seated all the way around. And then we can put this on. The seal. And then we want to make sure that we put the dampening rod with the pointed tip towards the bottom. Give that a good little wipe right there. Is there a correct amount of fork oil that you put in, or do you just fill it yeah, up? Yeah, there, there is a spec, and um, that's part of the reason why I had to look all this stuff up. So um, there's, a certain <clears throat> there's a certain level for each fork. And the ridiculous... The other equally sized wrench. Mm-hmm. Nothing to see here. It's a little awkward there. Cool. That's all we need. And so that's basically it. Uh, we'll add the amount of fork oil that we'll show here. We're also going to put a little thicker weight uh, fork oil in these to kind of help compensate for the, the lack of correct springer weight and uh, just kind of see how that that works get your feedback on that and it'll be um, a little stiffer yeah it should Good, um, that's what it, I want because just, you know I'd be sending it kind of hard <laughs> and putting thicker oil in it really just slows down the suspension it doesn't actually make it stiffer it just mm. slows everything down so um, there's pros and cons to doing that. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to go just a little bit heavier on the oil and test it out and see how it goes. And if not, we can swap it out pretty quick. 280 milliliters in this side. Soft jaws back in action. Obnoxious wrench. I can't wait to see the good comments about all the toolery that's oh, I'm being sure. I'm sure they used uh, here. Okay, that's all we need, folks. <clears throat> One fork rebuilt. All right. Now we do that all over again. Is it the same amount of milliliters for both forks, both sides? No. I'll try to spin it the other way. I don't think there's going to be any comments about the use of this specific tool, which is clearly a fork wrench. Huh. No oil in this well, one. Well, that's weird. The one, that's funny that the one with the, oh, it's all in there. It's, yeah. The diaper just soaked it all up. Wow, so we are lubeless. Oh, real. Lubeless on the yeah. rebound side. Is this the rebound side? <laughs> no, this is the compression this, side. It's supposed to be the spring side. Oh. Yeah, there's okay. Yeah, I see what's going on in there. This fork has reached its maturity ah, stage. Could finally breathe again. Yes. Put our 
washer. Dust seal with grease. Greasing up the dust seal. Wipe it down. One seal. All right, I'm going in. Fork seal driver. I got a little oh, yeah. kit of those for my uh, quick releases on my fuel system in the fuel line kit. Oh yeah, it's like a transmission old. line, quick disconnect. Yep, mm -hmm. much smaller, but does the same thing. Yes, sir. All right, we're in there. Sealed up. Dust seal. Now we put the oil. 110 milliliters. Trip, trip, trip. One springy boy. And that's how you rebuild? Uh, no name shock. That's right. Done. Thank you, Dave. Yes, sir. Be sure to hit up Dave at Weed Coated for all your high performance motorsports needs. Unless you're a dirt mm. biker that rides in the street. All Surrounds welcome. All off-road gas bikes yes. are welcome. Also, Dave builds wheels, so check out emotoworks.com for custom wheels. Mm. Also, use code loophole over there for a discount. And uh, hit up Dave for all your motorsports needs. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm.